January 5 to John 5 Tuesday, they stopped happy to go home. Oh, very, uh, needs a lot of attention, I think. This uh, you can see the pastor Rafi and Ali flat has just been, the stitch has just been taken off. After 10 days, yeah, yeah, he's a bit restless, he wants to go home. So excited. Yeah. Okay, you can see the cornea. Cornea, central, deep cornea also healing up. Uh, the white tissue, scarring. The ring of uh, vascularization, the blood vessel bring in the, the healing uh, cells. Huh? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So the surgery done was this surgery. So this is called the Aliflap Pastasorafi, which is explained as putting the suture needle in, the image one, through the stint or tubing, and then upper eyelid, then go through the third eyelid, then out from the lower eyelid. That's image one. Image two. Image two will be the lower eyelid, the stint. Go through the stint, the third image, and then it goes back from the lower eyelid, in the lower eyelid, through the third eyelid flap, and then comes up. Then on the fourth image, is, there's a stitch up on the upper eyelid, so it becomes like a horizontal mattress. On the image number five, tighten up the stitches, then the upper and lower eyelids are a pose. Co covering the eye, antibiotics and eye ointment given at the site in the media canter. It is called the eyelid flap and tassography done on this circuit area. Now the alternatives are the eyelid, the eyelid flap alone, whereby you don't you don't uh, have this lower eyelid involved. So the, the student neither goes through the stint or, or small tubing and then goes in the third eyelid and comes out from the third eyelid horizontal like a horizontal mattress. Then it goes up to the upper eyelid skin and come out and then it's tied up. Tied up. This this is like a horizontal mattress involving third eyelid. Now the other method is just the upper and lower eyelids where you just go through the upper eyelid and then down to the lower eyelid and come back again like horizontal mattress not involving the third eyelid flap no no third eyelid flap and then you close up upper and lower eyelids so this is tassography the other one is called third eyelid flap and uh, the one done on the dog was combined third eyelid flap and tassography and you see the results 10 days after uh, surgery this is uh, very good for deep ulcers, deep and wide ulcers, so that it has a chance to heal. And you can see the tissues have covered up the defect. It looks very ugly when you take out the stitches, but uh, 14 days later it will be smooth and uh, a white scar will be there. So now there's another method. This one involves a specialist, more, more, more skill required and the results are not guaranteed as well, depending on the skill of the surgeon. Now in image number one, you can see a cut, dotted line. The one is the limbus. The limbus is the area between the sclera and the conjunctiva. So the scissors will dissect it. Number two, you see the further dissection. And it goes round the limbus, 360 degrees. It's called 360 degrees flat. Limber flap. Then the third image, you can see the 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 suturing up of the upper and lower conjunctiva, and then the fourth one will be the whole uh, cornea being closed up for healing. It's called conjunctiva flap, and uh, it's not a guaranteed thing that. Uh, it will be uh, much better than the third eyelid flap plus tassography. But uh, it seems many books, many later books, they don't uh, recommend this method for some reason. Some of them think that it's outdated. But as you can see from this uh, clinical case, 
it is effective, especially if you do it in cattle or horses. And uh, this this conjunctival flare, that, that, that one you really need more skill. And then there's another method whereby the vet takes out, cuts out a square piece of conjunctival and put it onto the the cornea ulcer to close it up by stitching the conjunctival to the cornea ulcer, the deep cornea ulcer, stitching to the edges of it. And then after that, covering up the eyelid tarsography. This, this method, I've seen some successes, but there are, there are some failures as well. So it depends on the, the dog and the skill of the veteran surgeon. So, uh, so normally I do tarsography, which is a simple one. If the ulcer is not very extensive, uh, but it's deep. Then the other one, third eyelid flap, is a bit more difficult because of the tension. There's a lot of tension on the third eyelid. So the combined one is is the one which uh, has been done on this dog. And uh, it's a bit more complicated. It takes about six minutes to do it if I experience. And the results are good as well as uh, tarsography by itself. Refer to topiovets.com for the uh, cases under eye.